Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna continue the theme of me building out presets on video that I need for my band so you guys can find value in it as well. Uh, halfway through our set list, I will be switching over to an acoustic guitar for I think at least two songs. And I want to build my own acoustic guitar tone. So I thought, hey, let's make a video about it. Uh, if you guys have been finding value in these videos, please make sure to subscribe. That really does help out the channel. Thank you so much, let's get started. All right, so to get started, we are going to start and make a new preset. Um, I don't really have a plan for this uh, this video, so we're going to be doing it live, and uh, you guys are just going to see my process of how I'm going to build a tone. Now, there's nothing wrong with acoustic plus vocals. I just don't need the vocals, and I like to build stuff from scratch because I like to understand this stuff versus just using it. You know, there's nothing wrong with either one. It just depends what what you want. You know. Uh, so, real quick, when we're building out an acoustic amp, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just use a normal amp? Uh, you can. I've played through a deluxe reverb with this exact guitar in, in a couple of gigs. Uh, and while it didn't sound bad, one thing I did have to do is boost. I had a um, an EP boost pedal that I would crank up when I was playing acoustic. And then when I was going back to my electric, I'd have to remember to turn it all the way down. Otherwise, I would <laughs> my, acoustic, or my electric would be way too loud. So whenever you're using a, a normal amp, just know that you can use like a, a Princeton, a Deluxe, any of the Fender clean amps, but they have an amp in here specifically made for acoustic guitars. And I think, is it gonna be, I think we're gonna have to do a separate amp head and then a, a different cab. Yeah, the Acoustic Sonic. I don't know if we need a cab with us, so we're gonna experiment on the real. I'm using a Travis pick, whatever you want to call them. All right, so I was reading up on this before, because you've got some really cool options in here that you don't normally get in like a traditional amp. They're, like there are advantages to using an acoustic designed amp. So one, this is, uh, this is a Seagull Entourage. Uh, this is one of my favorite acoustic guitars I've played because it sounds like a Martin, but it's not the same price tag as a Martin. So don't sleep on Seagull. Uh, and fun fact, Seagull actually built Martin guitars for a little bit when the Martin factory burned down. And if there's one thing Canadians know, it's wood. <laughs> but one thing that's important to note is that this has a Fishman uh, piezo pickup in it. So the Acoustasonic amp actually has a string dynamic knob in here and it's specifically made for the piezo pickup so i was reading online on the the actual acoustic sonic it's based off of the 90 watt you can actually read the amps manufacturing like advice and it all it all translates over here i made a post about that in the facebook group earlier like Anytime I'm doing research for uh, a rig that I'm looking to build, I'll go in and I'll see what they're replicating, then go read the documentation for the actual thing. And it actually translates over really well. So all the knowledge you guys have seen so far has been either personal knowledge, using the real thing, or doing research. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is probably, uh, we'll do a compression pedal in the front, and then on the back side, I will probably do, I don't know if I wanna do chorus, I might do some chorus on the acoustic because I we're playing a um, landslide by Fleetwood Mac, which for me Fleetwood Mac is Peter Green, not Nikki Six or whatever her name is. On the back side to replicate the sound of a 12 string, I may use a chorus pedal. I will definitely use reverb and I may use some delay to beef up my tone. Let's get a compressor. So we're gonna go to dynamics and EQ. Uh, let's do let's try a different compressor this time. Let's try the dynamic compressor. Seems dynamic enough.
training. What I'm doing right now is I'm training my ear with a compressor on. When you see me zone out, what I'm doing is I'm listening to the frequency response. What my ear is deciphering is how are my low strings coming through versus my high strings. And what that turns into is bass and treble. So this isn't always the case, but think like your first two strings, this is your bass, your middle two strings are your middles, and the bottom two are your trebles. While a frequency response is way more complicated than that, if you can think of it in that terms, maybe it'll help you understand how to dial in amps. Because I saw, I get a lot of questions about dialing in amps. All right, well, there's probably a lot of footage that you guys just missed out on because uh, I was clipping when I was recording because I wasn't paying attention to my mixer. So <laughs> I'll just explain what I've done, and then hopefully I can do enough editing where this you didn't even notice. But all I did was I came in and I, I fixed some things on, on my amp and I changed compressors. I was using the dynamic compressor at first, but it was a little, it was compressing a little too much and I want my acoustic guitar to feel like it's it can breathe. It felt like it was too boxed in, if that makes sense. So now listen to my tone. <laughs> Uh, I know that I will inevitably get a question about this, so for the guy who's wondering why I have the sound hole cover, when you're playing live, n not all guitars need this. This guitar is just masterfully built. Like, Seagull makes amazing guitars. Uh, the parent company is Godin, or Godin, however you say it. They're French, French-Canadian. Uh, this guitar, being as resonant as it is, it feedback it, it gets feedback so quick because it's like it's putting out sound but then it'll pick up the sound of the speaker and then what it turns into is a loud hum that nobody likes so for me and i learned this lesson doing a, a duo country acoustic show <laughs> it was not it wasn't pleasant so ever since then I, i'm a firm believer in this also i had to get if you own a seagull guitar this i had to cut this or i got a buddy to cut it for me so it, it'll fit because the sound hole is actually too small for the and it, and the whole purpose is sound doesn't get into the the cavity and bounces out but I still have a little bit so it's getting in there and it doesn't affect the tone I mean if you're a campfire guy don't don't get one of these because it, it'll kill most of your sound um, it literally drops the volume probably like 40 percent it's pretty substantial every time I play my acoustic I'm plugged in and the other thing is like if I really dig in you'll hear my strings buzz and the reason is is that I play I mean I play guitar all day I'm not gonna lie to you I don't play thick strings like some of y'all might do a <gasps> when you hear this but I play tens on my acoustic guitar and then I got my uh, action taken way down where this guitar plays like an electric guitar you know and I'll show you I can play Gojira on it <laughs> Because I, I just don't care to have a great acoustic guitar in terms of like, it's got to be loud on its own and then I'll use a microphone. No, I'm like, bro, I, I've got Fishman pickups in it. I can push volume if I need, but most of the time I'm going to be playing with it plugged in. So say that out there because everybody's rig is different. This is why understanding the fundamentals that I'm talking about in this video are so important to understand so you can really think about what you need. And then please use all this stuff that we're going over. This is why these videos are out here. And I wish more people would stop doing dumb comparison videos of this to a Helix or whatever and make more usable videos. Because at the end of the day, man, I'm going to just go on a rant real quick. Because all of my fellow YouTubers, while it's nice because I'm the only one doing this and I'm growing really fast, I would also like to learn from the community. And every time I look up a Tone Master Pro video, there are no guides. It's just... How does this compare to the Helix? How does this compare to the FM9? And listen, man, all modelers sound great. Stop comparing. It's annoying. <laughs> all right, I'll shut up. I don't want to make anybody too mad. But I, I'm serious, you know? Like, if you're going to drop $1,700 on a modeler, they're all good. And if you want to drop $1,700 on a 10-year-old modeler and tell me that how much better the Helix is, power to you, man. You ought to use a 10-year-old iPhone, too. That thing is really fully featured for its hardware capability. But anyways, I'll shut up now. All right, so the other things we need to do is we need to get a reverb. I love using a reverb. I've been using the 65 Spring Reverb a lot because that's what I know. I might 
might change this up, but... Yeah, that's a lot better. Reverbs can just be so overpowering sometimes. It, it's hard to, to keep them really, like, dialed back. All right, I'm also going to add a delay. And I think I want... Let's do... Kind of just using it for a little bit of a slapback, so it kind of gives me a little bit more boost. Pretty good. I like that. Uh, and then what else do I want? Let's, I said I wanted to try chorus, and notice I'm putting all this stuff. Actually, I'm curious how chorus sounds in front of the amp. So let's do it here. I don't know why I'd want to do it post amp. There might be a good reason for me to do it post. Oh, oh, I know why. No, no, no. I think I'm going to put it before the amp or after the amp, and then we'll we'll we're going to test something. I have an idea of why that would be the case. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to run with that JC chorus. I'm just such a big fan of this chorus pedal. That sounds pretty good. L let's test it in front of the amp, though. I guess I'll leave it after the amp. What I was listening for is how it was reacting with the amp. And I mean, it makes sense to put it after the amp, right? Because this, this amp really isn't doing, it's not really doing a ton. It's interesting. You see two panels, but it only shows you one. So you only get half of the Acoustasonic. Because uh, that's fine. Because I think it's all the other effects that's on the actual amp. Uh, yeah, I'll probably leave it here. I don't think my acoustic rig needs to be anything too crazy. So this might be a really short video. So maybe I'll do a, I'll film another video today. Um, but yeah, this sounds like a cool acoustic rig. You know what we'll do for an ultimate test? Um, I need to, we're playing landslide. I need to practice it anyways. So what we're going to do is we're going to test it out, see how it sounds. All right. I'm learning how to play with these thumb picks. So if anyone, if you use these, let me know how <laughs> in the, the comment section. But here we go. I like that. That sounds pretty good.
All right, guys, that's going to conclude today's video. Again, acoustic guitar tones don't have to be that complicated. They're not nearly as complicated as the electric guitar. And just remember, people enjoy the sound of an acoustic guitar, so don't overprocess it. Like, I ended up taking out chorus for my rig, but I'll still keep it in there in case of I want to throw it on for whatever reason. But I just enjoy how my acoustic guitar sounds. Now, the reason why you'd still want to build out an acoustic preset versus just going directly into the front of the house is that you can actually control your reverb, your delay, whereas you're at the mercy of <laughs> an engineer, and hopefully they know what they're doing. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'm very active in my comment section, so I will get back to you. And a lot of you guys inspire a lot of these videos, so thank you so much. If you've been enjoying this style of content and you're interested in studying with me in a deeper level, please consider joining my Patreon. You can see on the screen now of an example of what I have to offer. You know, right now, all of my lessons are $5 a month. You get access to all the guitar profiles plus PDFs and an audio recording of it. So you can hear what I'm talking about. And I, I kind of write as if I were talking to you, like, hey, here are things to watch out for. Here are things to be mindful for. I put a lot of time into them and I appreciate all of my Patreon supporters so far. Thank you guys so much for coming over from the YouTube world into Patreon. I've grown by four, four members. That's crazy. Thank you guys so much. And you know, as always, I saw someone said on the comment, it was funny to see how excited I got about something. Look, that's just the testimony of this, of just modeling in general. You know, I love the Tone Master Pro. I think it's such a great tool, but at the end of the day, it has to be a tool and it has to be fun to use. So I just hope, I'm just grateful you guys are enjoying these videos. Thank you so much for helping me grow so fast. I'm about to break 500 subs and I'm on my way to monetization. So just thank you guys so much for supporting me. I am really appreciative of, of your time. All right, well with that, you guys know I'm a big fan of Attitude of Gratitude. I want to know one thing you're grateful for in the comment section below. For me, I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to do what I love every day, which is music, everything from producing to teaching to making these YouTube videos. And I'm just so darn appreciative of my family. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.